Hey guys, what's going on? So my neighbor's got an issue with their 48 volt Yamaha golf cart and let's see if we can figure it out. Um, what happens is there's nothing happening at all. So when I go over there, I'm immediately gonna look for a fuse issue or something or like dead batteries or something like that. So let's see what I find. Okay, so 2015 Yamaha. This one is a YDRX EX6. Found the three amp fuse that was blown, so there's no power getting to it. Change that out. This has an all tracks controller, 48 volt. So I'm gonna hook the computer up to it and read the error codes. They did replace a solenoid. This was the stock one. That's the aftermarket one. And I'm believing that there's an issue with this. So hopefully this can tell us because we have a voltage drop from here to here. Figured it out. <laughs> All right, I figured it out. Let me tell you what I did. This software came in very handy. All right, let me turn this off. Okay, so this is a 2015 Yamaha um, YDR EX6. So let's come back here. Okay, so this golf cart is equipped with the 500 amp all tracks controller and a 400 amp solenoid DC for 48 volt that was just installed when the factory one they thought went bad. Unfortunately, I would put the factory one back on, but they broke the lug. It happens, it's pretty common to break. But the, the way that I figured this out was I hooked up to the all tracks software via USB, turned it on, and I had a Negative ran to the battery and a positive up here. And I was able to test different solenoid values because it was telling me I had low voltage. Well, I knew I was getting 51 volts here. The battery charger was showing it was charged. There's 51 volts on both of these. And this side, when you hit the gas, would drop down to 40, 36, 40, 41. It would jump all around. So I knew something was the issue and this diode was reversed. There's a silver band on these diodes. This diode needs a silver band on the positive and not, not the negative. So I flipped that back around and that's what I'm suspecting might've damaged this one. These pre preload uh, resistors like this, you don't need these with this controller. But let me show you what fuse was bad. Give me a second to put all this stuff up. Okay, so on these golf carts, there's a fuse that is hidden way down here, right here. You can't see it when this little black cap's on. And this one was actually zip tied. It's easier to get to at the bottom. That's a three amp fuse normally. Alt, Alt tracks recommends a 10 amp. So I put a five amp in, it didn't blow um, like the three amp did. So I, I'm gonna have the owner get a 10 amp to put in there. I just don't have any 10 amps. I got a 15, but I don't wanna go that high. Five amps work and a three amp work for several years. So no issues there. But what I did was I changed that fuse out and I was able to find, so before we had nothing, no backup, no backup horns, no alarms, nothing. As soon as I got power, I was like, okay, something's up. Something's working. The lights have always worked. So that's not a real good indicator on these if something's wrong. That's when I came back here, started digging around. I had 51, 51, 51, 51. But when I hit the gas, this would go down to 40. I'm like, what's going on? So there's a little indicator light here. It was blinking one green, two red, and that's low voltage. So that right there tells us something's going on. The batteries are charged. The battery's got a good charge. I got 51 volts here, even when the pedal is depressed. So I knew something's going on with this coil. <clears throat> the software actually will tell you if the pedal is working or not. You can also enable and disable a speed sensor. Speed sensors will cause this issue as well. Um, so I went in the software, was able to change it to a four pole just in case it was a four pole and it got switched to an eight pole when it died or something like that. That wasn't the issue. I was able to see RPMs. I was able to see voltage. I was able to see pedal response zero to 100. So that was good. You know, it just showed everything that we needed to see. So with the software, all you do is plug it in, turn it on, and it will automatically find it. You can save and monitor everything. Here's the three amp fuse right there. So it's super easy 
to use. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and I'll hook the laptop up real quick. So okay, as soon as I plug in the USB cable to the computer and start the software, it's gonna pop up and show me all kinds of information. What I wanna see is the monitor tab, and right here is gonna show me everything I need to know. So like this, I got the key, I'll turn it on. It's gonna light up with all the fields. And here's the issue that we're having, low battery. It's not a low battery. You hear that click real late. This solenoid is either sticking or self grounding out. So something internally is wrong with it. It happens, they're, they're made in China, what do you expect? So from there, I was able to just to troubleshoot one thing after another, but see, you see your throttle, so you know that your throttle is not the issue. You see your speed control, that's not the issue. You can go in here and disable all kinds of stuff. You can tune it, delete it. There's a lot of different things you can change. Uh, maximum gain, um, speed limit, turbo, what kind of driving style it is, where it's being driven and how much voltage for low and high voltage. It's, it's definitely a lot of neat information that you can get out of this. It shows the rating, the amperage, the field amps pretty much everything you need to know and you can screenshot all right so a little update actually in this video so after talking to the owner this is the new one he bought he broke he didn't get a chance to try it well he tried it but it didn't work and he didn't know why it was because of that blown fuse that one's lasted a very long time so with that being said the diode being reversed actually didn't have any effect on it uh it just over time died so pretty pretty good one honestly he said they had it for like three years on there four years on there so that being said guys thanks for watching i hope you all enjoy if you have any questions comment below and as always stay safe here's what i did um i literally just took the little all right guys here's one better um for jumping this out for a temporary to get in the garage or something when you don't have a solenoid that's working correctly or you got a parasitic drain, you can take out the pre-charge uh, cap or pre-charge resistor from right here. You don't need it with these controllers and you can just jump these two together and you're good to go. That'll get you into the garage or wherever you need to go. It's not a permanent solution, but it's a quick one. I went ahead and put a fuse in there instead of a jumper. That worked just right, fine. Guys, I know that video was kind of long and lengthy and kind of confusing so the original diagnosis was there was no power nothing at all owner changed solenoid i didn't know that they changed the solenoid back uh, until after i got it working um so the whole culprit in the beginning was a blown fuse they changed the solenoid out and come to find out when the, the reason the fuse probably blew was because the solenoid does have a short internally that's why it's only showing 40 volts so that being said changing the solenoid is going to be the issue uh, the fix for it i got it jumped right now so they can get in the garage and with that being said guys the software for all tracks is definitely handy i'll leave a link in the description where you can get solenoid parts the software and everything that you need thanks for watching and have a great day